Hello and welcome to Between Two Stethoscopes, your source for the physician assistant life from pre-PA to PAC. I'm your host, Bree Marks. When we talk about PA school, the phrase that comes up over and over is, it's like drinking from a fire hose. The reason people say that is because it's so much information in such a small amount of time and everything is important. Down the road, you can't tell your patient, I'm sorry, I don't know how to treat your acute kidney injury. I had six other tests today, we learned that. Because of that, it's so important to be able to process all that information, synthesize it, and be able to recall it later. So the two guests that I have today were masters of that. <laughs> so I have Cassandra Williams, uh, PAC, who was valedictorian of her PA school class, and Keaton Bennett, PAC, who was salutatorian of his class. So thank you guys so much for being with me today. I think our audience is really gonna get a lot out of this. Thanks for having yeah, us, Thanks, Bree. Sure, so can I have you introduce yourself? Sure, um, like Bree said, I'm Cassandra. I went to Misericordia University. I graduated in 2016, um, and I've been a hospitalist PA for a little over two years now. And I'm Keaton, I graduated from Marywood University in 2017, and I've, I'm a neuro hospitalist PA for just over a year now. All right, great, well let's jump in guys. So, what was undergrad like for you? What did you study? What was your major? Anything that was really difficult for you or that you excelled at? Um, so, my major was medical science. I did kind of the combined program, the three plus two program, so I knew what I wanted to do right out of high school, um, you know, straight into the PA program. I liked the science classes a lot just because that was what I was interested in, um, but I think the class I struggled with the most was definitely organic chemistry. Okay. <laughs> and I was an ex exercise science major. Um, I also like the sciences, so I really enjoyed uh, anatomy and physiology and exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. um, and like Cassandra, I also struggled in organic chemistry. So <laughs> what's kind of funny about that is that I was a sociology major in school um, in my undergrad. So when I had to get ready to apply to PA school, I took all of my hard sciences at once. Mm -hmm. And actually organic chemistry came pretty naturally. <laughs> It was, it was general chemistry that would make me cry every day. <laughs> so, um, all right, in the transition from undergrad to PA school, was there anything that you all found really difficult or surprising about the volume of work, um, the difficulty level? Um, yeah, so I think everyone tells you how much work is involved um, in PA school, and you kind of are like, okay, yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, and you don't really understand until you're actually there how much work it is and how much information you have to learn in such a short time period. Mm -hmm. Right, and I would, I would agree with that. You know, there's really nothing that can prepare you, prepare you for the amount of work or the pace that you're about to go through. Yeah, absolutely, but the good news is, is that almost everyone that gets accepted does graduate and become PA, so it's not like you're the only person that's ever gone through it. Yes. It is really tough, but it's doable. Definitely. Yeah, You just have doable. to sort of change your lifestyle a little bit, right. I yeah. would say. So you guys were obviously very successful in PA school. Can you share some of your study tips or techniques, things that really worked for you? Yeah, so for me, uh, most of my professors use PowerPoints, mm -hmm. so I would just take those and, and study those. Um, some classmates I had would go through the PowerPoints maybe five times. Um, I would make sure, I would only go through them one or two times, but make sure I could read everything off that slide from memory before, before I went on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say I think what's difficult is there's so much different material you can study from, you know, whether it be 300 slides in the class um, or your big, you know, current book or all the prep books. Um, I think for me it was just kind of impossible to study from every single mm -hmm. source. There's just not enough time. Um, so I would kind of use uh, the Pants Prep book. I really like that, the Pants mm -hmm. Prep Pearls, um, and mostly study from that and then, you know, reference current or anywhere else when I kind of need to to go a little bit more in depth in a certain subject, but I would say what helped me was definitely sticking to one study material. Right, so it sounds like you guys are both talking about like efficient use of time. Yeah, definitely. Because there is so much information that, I think this was something that I did was I was always trying to make 10 different study guides and mm -hmm. I use probably 1,000 highlighters in school, <laughs> highlighting my notes in all these different ways. Um, so what do you think about making a separate study guide from your material? I mean, for me, a lot of my classmates did that. I didn't see much use. I thought it was just more more of a waste of time because the professors already have this PowerPoint that's nice, neat, and concise for mm -hmm. you um, that you can, you can go through pretty quickly. Um, so I really didn't use any. Okay. Yeah, I think I kind of, you know, when the professor was presenting a PowerPoint, 
I would be typing it out in class more to just make me focus and pay attention and then at mm -hmm. the end I'd have an outline. Other than that, I wouldn't put too much time into trying to make a study guide. Um, I needed that time to actually study the material. <laughs> That's a great tip. Yeah. yeah. So did you guys do, um, I know you talked about not doing a whole lot of supplemental material, but did you listen to any podcasts, um, any sort of other media that was very helpful to you? Yeah, I had a couple of good go-to podcasts that I would use on my way to and from PA school. Mm -hmm. I'd say sometimes I would look up YouTube videos, nothing specific, but sometimes, you know, they would kind of make an illustration or maybe go a little bit more in depth in a subject that I kind of was struggling mm -hmm. with that maybe clarified it a little bit. Absolutely. And actually, I'm a really visual person, so I want to give a shout out to another PA artist person out there who um, is not sponsoring me. He doesn't know that I <laughs> exist. But um, there is a PA that makes a product called um, Med Comics. And it's basically um, little short cartoon snapshots of say a certain disease process or a concept is very, very helpful. Totally recommend that you look that up. And like I said, it's by, um, by another PA that creates this beautiful art that makes these concepts really easy to understand. So I use that a lot. Nice. So, okay, were you involved in anything outside of studying? What did you do to keep yourself sane while you were in school? Um, definitely staying active. Um, I would go to CrossFit classes a few days a week and I would join intramural basketball games um, or softball, something like that. Um, that's, that's what I would try to do. I did try to work part-time. Mm -hmm. I had um, a part-time job that I kept from undergrad and after a little while, not maybe a couple of months, it was just too much for me. I needed to stay sane, so I ended up quitting mm -hmm. my job. Yeah, I would say pretty much the same. Try to stay active. Um, PA school is set up where you usually have a couple longer breaks throughout mm -hmm. the day. So my friends and I would try to you know, jump over to the gym so we could stay active. Um, did a couple intramural tournaments. Um, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like don't work, mm -hmm. practice some self-care. <laughs> yes. <Definitely>. And um, <laughs> did you ever have time to go out with friends? Was there ever any socializing throughout school or was it just study, 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 tell you from when you woke up to when you went to sleep? I, I kind of made it a priority to make sure I was going out with my friends and socializing. Um, obviously not as much as I was in undergrad, but you know, definitely Friday night, you know, I kind of kept that for friends and Saturday night. I can only study so many hours in a day Absolutely. before I say, all right, I'm, I'm ready for a break. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did the same thing every Friday, Saturday night. Kind of hang out. I did too. I know some of my classmates, God bless them, they would study all day Saturday and yeah. into the night on Saturday night, and I was like, I am not retaining anything. Right. So sometimes right. I'd stay in the library just sort of pretending to study because they were <laughs> studying. I was like, really on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> I'd been on Facebook for three hours at that yeah. point. So yeah, I'm the same. I can only have good quality time. Mm -hmm. And what was really helpful to me was to say, I have dinner plans at six. So that means I'm in the library at eight, and I'm gonna right. use that whole day, right. and I'm not gonna be distracted, phone is away, right. and really try to use that time to be quality, right? instead of just being like, oh, I'm just gonna be here for 15 hours. Yeah, good um, incentive. I also could never do all miters. That was something that did not work for me. How about you yeah. guys? I agree. I would kind of have to, you know, I know a lot of my classmates studying until two or three in the morning, but I get mm -hmm. to a point where I'm so tired, I'm not retaining anything, where a good night's sleep actually I think is better for me. Um, so I think midnight would be my, my cutoff. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I would make sure I got a decent night's sleep and I would have to get up early in the morning to yeah. get that last look in before the test. Same for me. And I, um, I am not a night owl, but I'm definitely a morning person. So what I found worked for me is 8 p.m. every night I was done. It didn't matter how many tests I had the next day, I had to be done because otherwise I would just get so anxious I wouldn't be able mm. to sleep anyway, I'd have a terrible yeah. night's sleep, be all foggy in the morning and didn't accomplish anything. So that did mean that sometimes I woke up at 3 a.m. Yeah. to study you right. know, for another five hours before the test, but uh, I know what worked for, for me and my line of thinking my body I had to go I had to be done yeah. 8 p.m. and then I could watch the office which was yeah <laughs> so okay so as we're wrapping up here what tips would you give any upcoming or current PA students just to help them be successful academically anything that you would offer them that you think could help them out so I think the big thing is to to know yourself know what works for you and what doesn't know how to optimize your time the best way you can and mm -hmm. to not not focus on your classmates as much because everybody learns at a different pace. Everybody needs more hours than others to study. So really just focus on yourself and mm -hmm. don't worry about what everybody else is doing. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like Keaton said, you know, you kind of have to find what works for you um, because what works for me might not work for everybody else. Um, and I think in the end, you just have to kind of remember um, that you're going to get through it and you're going to have a great career. And looking back now, school was kind of a blur to me um, and it's all worth it, you know, because we have such yeah. great careers now. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And just one other tip that I would like to add is, um, you know, utilize your resources around you. You know, if you're really struggling with a concept, maybe the person that sits next to you really has that one and vice versa. So utilize your classmates, utilize your you know, upperclassmen, if you want to call them that, the people that are in their second year when you're in your first year, um, and also your professors. They really are there, um, even though it doesn't always seem that way, they do <laughs> want you to succeed. If they accepted you out of the thousands of people that applied, it's because they think that you can do it. They see something in you. Um, then they know you can succeed. And like I said, almost everybody does. So even when you're really struggling, just remember every single PA that you've ever met was there too. Mm -hmm. We've all been through it. We all got through it. We're all glad we're not there now. <laughs> but um, honestly, I would do it again if I had to. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm glad I don't have to. <laughs> but I would. So, well, thank you guys so much for talking yeah, with me you, today. Man. I think that our audience really got a lot out of it. If you have any questions for Cassandra or for Keaton or any topic that you'd like me to cover on an upcoming interview, please leave me a comment below. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Between Two Stethoscopes. Please like and subscribe. And if you like the content that you saw here, please go ahead and share with your friends. So we'll be back with another interview soon. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. Have a good night.